2019 exam two. Um, we're gonna be doing step-by-step -step solutions for the four questions. Um, thank you guys for watching the video. Subscribe if you're new, like the video, and let's get started. Number one, an object of mass M is moving along the x-axis having velocity to the left with magnitude V1 at x equals A. The only force acting on the object is given by Fx equals negative C1x minus C2x cubed, where C1 and C2 are known positive constants. Determine whether or not this force is conservative and the kinetic energy of the object at x equals A over 2. Um, they gave us a little diagram, and we're going to be using that. So let me draw that diagram real quick. Um, so this is what they gave us right here. They gave us this, and they gave us 0, A over 2, and A. So that's 0, that's A over 2, and right here is A. So they want us to find whether or not this force is conservative. So to find if the force is conservative, you have to find if it has a potential energy function, and all you have to do is just take the negative integral from the force that they gave you. So let's start and write. The force that they gave us is f of x is equal to negative c1x minus c2x cubed, and that's the force they gave us. So the potential energy of this is gonna be negative integral f of x dx. So now you just gotta find the negative integral of that, which is equal to the negative integral of negative c1x minus c2x cubed. And that's all one. So when you take the integral of that, the potential energy function is going to be c1, c1, x squared over two minus c2 x4 over four, but it's gonna be plus c2 x4 over four. And plus a constant, whatever the constant is. Plus constant, whatever the constant is, you should just write constant, plus the constant, and that is the potential energy function. And after that, um, if you wanna prove it's conservative, all you have to do is just take the derivative of that and see if you get back the original answer, negative du dx. So when you take the derivative of that, um, it equals negative c1x minus c2x cubed. That's what it equals to when you take the derivative of that. And that, this shows that it is conservative. And that is the answer for part A. And that's the answer for part A. If you write all this, that should be full credit for part A. Now let's go on to part B. Find the kinetic energy of the find the kinetic energy of the object. Okay? So now to find the kinetic energy at A over 2, we're gonna be using a conservation of energy. So we're gonna be using this formula right here. K E one plus u1 is equal to ke2 plus u2 which means kinetic energy one plus potential energy one equals kinetic energy two plus potential energy two so what we're trying to find is um kinetic energy of one which is going to be a over two and a is going to be our kinetic energy two like where it stops okay so all we have to do is we can rearrange it K E A over two is equal to K E A plus U A minus U A over two, because we subtracted it. So now putting all that together, um, so the K E of A is just gonna be half MV, yeah, it's gonna be half MV one squared, because it says it's moving to the left is velocity is to the left with magnitude V1. So yeah, the velocity is to the left, so it's gonna be, yeah, velocity is to the left, so it's gonna be half mv1 squared. Um, yeah, so it's moving from A to A2. It's moving from A to A2. So yeah, so this is, yeah, so this is the, yeah, this is the initial 
and that's the final. So it's the same thing, you just subtract and it's gonna be the same. So um, now we go with, this is gonna be half mv1 squared. It's gonna be equal to half mv1 squared plus ua. So all you have to do is just substitute the a for x over here, substitute a for x. So it's gonna be plus c1 a squared over two plus c2 a four over four. Okay, now we have that one and then you're subtracting minus a over two. So you're gonna put a over two in that right there. So it's gonna be a squared over four. So it's gonna be um, a squared a over two. So it's gonna be a squared over four. So it's gonna be c1 a squared over eight, and then minus C two A four over sixty four. Yeah, so C two A four over sixty four. Okay, so now since we have all that, uh, we can combine, and that's gonna be you can uh, combine, yeah, you can combine. So, let's see, time. Okay, so this one is gonna be 16. You can put 16 C2 A4 over 64. 16 minus one is gonna be 15 A4 over 64. And this one right here, you can just multiply that by four and it's gonna be three C1 A squared over eight. So the final answer is gonna be one half M B1 squared plus, okay, four, okay, multiply by four, four minus one is three, three C one A squared over eight plus, so that's gonna be 64, 16 minus one, 15 C two A four over 64, and that should be the final answer. Yeah, three one three over eight c one a squared, fifteen over sixty four c two a fourth. Yeah, and that's the final answer for the kinetic energy of a over two. Okay, so number two, a box of mass m is placed at rest on an inclined plane, known angle theta. Um, a known horizontal force magnitude of p is applied to a block. Co 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 coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is a function of the position on the plane given by mu equals all that. Assuming the block slides down the plane, find its velocity at x equals L over two. So let's start by drawing the diagram. Um, I think this is what they gave us right there. And then there's a block right there. And then there's P right there. And this is, uh, yeah, from here to here is from zero to L. And we're trying to find the velocity right here, L over two. We're trying to find the velocity right there. So this one, we're gonna be using um, the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem, uh, we're gonna be using that because friction is being used. So, so yeah, let's just draw, let's just draw the free body diagram for this. So this is the block right here. Um, it has P, has P going that way. Um, actually, let me, let me curve it. So it's like on the thing. Okay. Okay, so this is the block right there. It has P and then it has mg and then it has normal force and then it has friction so the block is sliding down the plane so friction is that way so it has mu and that way okay and now we're trying to find the velocity at x equal all over two so we're just going to be focusing this is going to be our coordinate system so all we're gonna be focusing on is the x. All we're, all we're gonna be focusing on is the x because it's not moving in the y direction. So um, it's gonna be, yeah, okay. So let's just get our, and this is theta right here. 
So let's just get our x coordinates real quick. So this right here is theta, or yeah, this right here is theta. So we know to find the x direction of this, this is gonna be, yeah, this is gonna be negative p cosine theta and negative mu n, and the only positive is gonna be mg, it's gonna be mg sine theta. So, and find to find n, n is gonna be mg is gonna be mg cosine theta plus the p sine theta because they're both going downwards, so p sine theta. So let's just write this. n is mg cosine theta plus p sine theta and uh, x direction, uh, we have mg sine theta downwards and we have p cosine theta minus p cosine theta but and yeah minus p cosine theta minus mu n minus mu mg cosine theta plus p sine theta and that is all the forces in the x that's all the forces in the x. So, yeah, that's all the forces in the x. So now we just have to set the, the equation. So it's gonna be work is equal to change in kinetic energy, which is equal to mvf squared over two minus mvi squared over two. And since it's starting from rest, we know this is gonna be zero. So it's just mvf squared over two, and it's gonna be equal to the integral from zero to L over two, which is what we're trying to find. And all we have to do is just plug in the, all the forces, all this, the f of x, dx, and take the integral of that. So when you take the integral of all that, it's gonna be equal to mg sine theta minus p cosine theta, minus p cosine theta, L over two, because you're taking the integral, you gotta add the x, and then it's gonna be negative mu naught, because remember the mu they gave us is mu naught, um, mg cosine theta, mg cosine theta plus p sine theta, L over two, yeah, p sine theta, oh yeah, yeah, when it's p, p sine theta, um, and then you took out the one plus x over l, zero l over two, and one plus x over l. One plus x over l. Yeah, because they gave us one plus x over l, so we know what uh, mu naught, mu naught, we just took it out, the equation, and one plus x over L, we're gonna take the integral of that by itself, because it's easier to take the integral of that by itself. So after you take the integral of that, um, let's just write out the whole thing. MVF squared over two is equal to mg sine theta, mg sine theta minus p cosine theta, L over two, and you have minus mu naught mg cosine theta, mg cosine theta plus p sine theta, and then that's gonna be L over two plus L over two over L, so that's gonna be equal to five, yeah, that's gonna be equal to five L over eight. 5L over 8. So that's 5L over 8. And I think that is the final answer. That, that's not the final answer they got because you're trying to solve for VF. So you would have to multiply both sides by 2. And after you do that, divide by M. And you should get the answer that they got in the answer key. And that's just going to be 5L over 4. And then when you divide it by M, 1 over M.
and then you take the square root vf is equal to is going to be the square root it's going to be equal to the square root of 1 over m because you're dividing everything by 1 over m and then you can do yeah you can here we can move this to this side or you can leave it and it's going to be m g Yeah, one all over m. Yeah, let's just yeah, let's just move it to this side so it can be consistent with the answer. So it's gonna be negative five five l over four. Yeah, negative five l over four. Yeah, let's do that. Negative five l over four mu naught, and then all this mg cosine theta plus p sine theta, mg. Cosine theta plus P sine theta. And then you add mg sine theta, mg sine theta L minus P cosine theta L. Yeah, if you want to distribute mg sine theta L minus P cosine theta L. Then that should be the answer that they got in the answer key. So number three, um, this is a momentum equation, momentum problem. In order to give a spacecraft an energy boost, they use the slingshot effect when which spacecraft interacts with the planet in which they perfectly elastic collision. This can be understood by considering the interaction of the light craft with some heavy object, mass m, or the actual force exerted on the spacecraft is not specified. Assuming the heavy object continues in the original direction, obtain enough equations that you can solve for the magnitude of the final velocity and the final direction uh, in its initial direction and the magnitude of the initial velocity of the heavy object VP. So um, based on the diagram they gave us, um, we can already know, let me just draw it, I'll just draw a quick demonstrate, quick little thing of what they gave us. So that's M, that's M right there. And then they gave us the straight line and this is V1. Yeah, V1 is coming down. That's V1 right there. And this is theta one. And then we have the resulting direction of V1 is VF. And we have theta F. So um, to begin this, and this is L right here. This is L. Yeah, that's L. Okay, so to begin this, I'm gonna be using conservation of momentum. So let's start off with the formula. P equals mv uh, mass times velocity. And we're gonna find the forces in the x direction before, forces in the x direction after, forces in the y, and forces in the y after. So let's go px initial is gonna be equal to, this is the initial. So the initial one, m is gonna have a velocity of vp. So that's just gonna be mvp minus which is the small object, minus ms. ms is the small object's mass. Um, V1 cosine theta one. V1 cosine theta one, because that's V1 cosine theta one, that's the x direction, so you just take the cosine, and it's going in the opposite direction. So it's gonna be negative, okay? Um, Okay, yeah, because it's moving to the right and that's coming down to the left, so it's negative. Now we got that. Now let's do PX final after they collide is going to be MVP, still moving. The mass M is still moving with the same velocity, but this time is going down VF, but it's still going to be cosine. Still going to be cosine. It's going to be plus MS VF cosine theta F now because it moved here and cosine is going right now. So they're both positive. We got the x's. Now let's do the y's. P, y initial is equal to mv. P doesn't have a y, so it's just gonna be m1 sine is moving down to the left, so it's gonna be negative v1 sine theta one, negative m s v1 sine theta one, and yep, okay, now we're gonna find the final PYF, 
I think it's gonna be negative. Yes, yeah, the same thing, but this time it's just negative M S V V one. Is it V one still? Oh, it's V F. Yes, V F sine theta F. And those are the four equations we're gonna need. So now all you have to do is set the x's equal to each other and set the y's equal to each other. So the first equation we're gonna get is MVP minus MSV1 cosine theta one is equal to MVP plus MSVF cosine theta F, okay? I think that's the first equation. Now the second one is gonna be negative M S V one sine theta one is equal to negative M S V F sine theta F. And that is the second equation. And the third equation we're gonna use um, is the kinetic energy one, because it says perfectly elastic collision, which means K E, I mean K E initial is equal to K E final. So it's just gonna be the initial kinetic energy is gonna be the kinetic energy of the small one, m s v one squared over two, plus the kinetic energy of the big one, which is m v p squared over two, which is equal to the final. The final still gonna be m v p squared over two, but now it's gonna be v f instead, plus m v f squared over two, MSVF squared over two, MSVF squared over two, and that should be the third equation and final equation to solve this question. Only because it says perfectly elastic collision. And let me check the answer key. And MVP squared over two plus MSV1 squared over two equal MVP squared over two plus MSVF squared over two. Yep, and I think that's the correct answer over here. They just put the zero, but it's the same answer. And I think that's all for question three. Number four, last and final question. A small ball of mass M is fired from frictionless spring gun by compressing the spring constant K1 in amount A. The gun is aimed at the angle theta as shown at the highest point in the ball's trajectory. It enters a frictionless tube which contains a spring with spring constant K2. Part A, find the velocity of the ball when it leaves the gun. Call this velocity V1, and then find the maximum height reached by the ball, call this height H, and then find the amount the second spring gets compressed and call that distance B. So this one seems like it's gonna be a conservation of energy question because there's no friction. So we're gonna be using um, the conservation of energy equation. So, okay, so let's get started. Um, so let's start off by writing what the kinetic energy thing is. So we're gonna be using this equation right here, Ke1 plus U1 equals Ke2 plus U2. Let me erase that. Okay. Ke1 plus U1 is equal to Ke, is equal to Ke2 plus U2. Okay, Ke2 plus U2. So we're gonna be starting from rest. So we know Ke1 for this, for part A is gonna be zero. And we're trying to find when it, the velocity when it leaves the gun. So that's the only thing that's gonna be zero. Now we have to find the potential energy of one inside the gun. So we know that it, uh, it's compressed the distance A in the gun. And we already know that the formula for potential energy, spring potential energy is Kx squared over two. So now since we know what that is, we already know what K is. K is equal to K1 and A is gonna be the distance. So the potential energy while it's inside the gun is gonna be K1 A squared over two. Now since we're done with that, we're gonna do the final potential energy we're trying to solve is gonna be called V1. They said name it V1. So MV1 squared over two plus the potential energy when it's in the air um, when it leaves the gun. So based on the diagram they gave us, if you're looking at the paper, they gave us the distance is A and they gave us the height is H. So 
the ball, when it leaves the gun, is going to be, well, let me just draw it. So this is how it's going to be. They gave us A right there. That's H. And they gave us this theta. Yeah, they gave us that theta. And we're trying to find, yeah, we're trying to find the H when it leaves the gun. So we can just do sine theta. Sine theta is equal to H over A. And we're trying to know the H. So H is going to be A sine theta. A sine theta. So now since we know the H, that's going to be that's going to be the potential energy, mgh. So mg sine theta a, because the potential energy for gravity is mgh, as you guys probably know. So just substitute that h there, and that's going to be plus mg a sine theta, and that should be the formula that you use to solve it. So now we're just going to solve for v1, and okay. Now we're just going to solve for v1. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna subtract K1A squared over two minus MGA sine theta, minus MGA sine theta. And then you're gonna multiply both sides by two over M. So you have this and then times two over M to get rid of the two over M, multiply both sides by two over M and then square root the whole thing, and that should be equal to V1, we're trying to find. And that is the same answer that they got in the, that's the same answer they got in the answer key. So now we have V1, part A is done. Okay, now for part B. For part B, um, they want us to find the height, the maximum height reached by the ball. Maximum height reached by the ball. So we're going to be using the same formula again. The Ke1 plus U1 equals Ke2 plus U2. So this time we can take, um, yeah, let me just do this quick. Ke1 is going to be MV1 squared over 2. And U1 is going to be MG A sine theta. It's the same thing as part A. And U2 is going to be MGH, which is, we're trying to, which, is, which is what we're trying to find. And KE2 is going to be, um, is going to be MV1 squared, MV1 squared cosine theta, cosine squared theta over 2. So when you do KE1 plus U1 equals KE2 plus U2, and you solve for H, you should get the answer that they get in the, in the answer key. And for the final part, the only reason I'm rushing is because I got to get out the room. And for the final part, um, all you have to do is use the, use the initial for part C. For part C, it's going to be the same thing, KE1 plus U1 equals KE2 plus U2. And KE1 is 0 and KE2 is 0. KE2 is 0 because you're trying to find where it stops. And U2 is going to be K2B squared over 2. And U1 is K1A squared over 2. K2B squared over 2 plus MGH because of gravity. And U1 is just equal to K1A squared over 2. And when you solve for that, you should be able to get B and the correct answer. And that's it for 2019 exam two, and I'll see y'all in the next video.